FIFA imperialism. But every country is going to be represented by their greatest ever player. And they're going to be competing in one versus one matches to figure out who's the actual GOAT. And what better way to start than a man who has three World Cups? Pele to start things off. Okay. Oh my days, we have a showdown of the GOATs right away. When you think of the GOAT in football, you either think of Messi or you think of Pele. And these two legends did not disappoint. They would go back and forth scoring multiple goals each. What an angle, okay? He ties it up 5-5. The game would go all the way up to 7-7 with Messi scoring what seemed to be the winner with only 30 seconds left. Oh, Messi! There it is, surely that's the winner. But Pele wasn't done just yet. This is Pele's last chance, Pele's last chance, oh my days! He actually tied it. Which means we're now headed to golden goal to figure out our first winner of FIFA imperialism. Let's see who wins this. What? As a right foot, he's, he's dancing on him. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Messi wins. And just like that, Messi takes Brazil and most of South America. This is the end of the road for Pele, man. But things aren't over because we're still going to see goats like Ronaldo, Rooney, Zidane, and much more coming up. And next, we see a smart play from Zlatan who sneakily takes Norway without any competition. Zlatan is straight out here expanding, okay? We would finally get a battle as Shevchenko would decide to go next and pick a fight with Haji and Rooney. Romania. The Battle of Mid, as I like to call it. Both Haji and Shevchenko would duke it out for the Battle of Eastern Europe, but there was only one person that was going to come out on top. Oh, Haji! Oh my days! This man's crazy! Haji's a crazy man! I didn't think Haji had in him, but you know what? Fair play, fair play. And just like that, Haji takes most of Eastern Europe. Look at my boy Haji, bro. But next, we would see Ronaldo himself get on a boat to attack the United States of America. He's trying to make them overseas claims, fam. This matchup was looking one-sided, but to be fair to Landon Donovan, he did manage to stay in the game for a little while. <laughs> Donovan, bro, where did that come from? But Ronaldo wasn't going to allow this to go on for any longer, and he quickly ended the game. That's too easy, bro. Ronaldo literally sailed across the ocean and conquered, bro. He's taken the United States. Step aside, Joe Biden. There's a Silly. new president in town. And then the wheel picked Sadio Mane to sail across the ocean to fight for some new territory. Sadio Mane is going to Mexico. Unfortunately, he wouldn't be in Mexico for long because Hugo Sanchez would send him packing. Bye-bye, Senegal. Hugo Sanchez defends his territory and delves into Africa. But he wasn't done just yet because Hugo Sanchez will then attack Ronaldo and the United States. If Ronaldo wins this, he could really be expanding his territory, man. And that was exactly Ronaldo's plan because even though Hugo Sanchez scored an early goal, Ronaldo would come from behind and win the game and successfully take Mexico. And he also took a little bit of land that Hugo Sanchez had in Africa as well. I don't know if anyone can stop Ronaldo at this point, bro. Zidane would go next letting us see two of history's greatest midfielders play against each other. Zizou invading Xavi. Okay. As a Barcelona fan, I wanted to see Xavi win, but Zidane scored first. Oh my days. Thankfully, Xavi was able to tie the game and he went down to win it in golden goal. What a goal! There it is! Barcelona on top! Come on! This win gave Xavi most of the land in Western Europe. Moving on, things would get even crazier as you would see Puskas go through Austria and Slovakia to take his Czech Republic from Nedved. Puskas takes the Czech Republic. There we go. But Lewandowski would then see this as an opportunity and he would strike Puskas taking all of his land and expanding the territory of Poland. Lewandowski is that guy, bro. But then we would see our biggest land grab yet as Mo Salah would go over five countries in order to challenge Xavi for his land. He's coming and he's coming strong. All right, let's see if he can take Xavi's land as well. Unfortunately for Mo Salah, things didn't quite go to plan because Xavi absolutely demolished the Egyptian. I ain't here to mess around, bro. Take my name seriously. That's what Xavi's saying, bro. His word's not mine, okay? And just like that, Xavi's become a serious threat in FIFA imperialism. But Xavi's gonna have to wait for a bit because Abedi Pele is gonna head west and have a showdown with Didier Drogba. Alright, alright, I can get with that. The match started off pretty slow with Pele and Drogba both getting a few goals each, but then in the second half, Abedi Pele turned it up and played Drogba out of the building and absolutely demolished him. Pele, Pele's bullying him, bro. 
Pelly is bullying Drogba. This is unfair. Pelly absolutely demolished him. That was that was hard to watch, bro. And just like that, Pelly basically doubled his territory. Bye bye, Didier. We've already eliminated eight goats, and we also have Messi, Ronaldo, and Xavi holding big chunks of land. And of course, Hyungman's on all the way over there, just chilling. And then we would finally get a new player attacking as George Best would attack Wales and their greatest player ever, the Welsh Pirlo, Joe Allen. Even though everyone knows that Joe Allen is the goat, George Best didn't show him any respect in this game. Have mercy, George Best. Oh, this is not looking good for the Welsh Pirlo. And that was enough to send Joe Allen and Wales packing. He put up a good fight, but George Best, man, what a player. And before we knew it, we had a new King of Wales. And with all this imperialism going on, it was only a matter of time that this happened. Finally, England gets a go at imperialism. You never thought I'd say that. And in typical England fashion, Rooney went for the big dog himself, Xavi. This is gonna be crazy, bro. Xavi versus Rooney turned out to be one of the greatest matches so far because both players were giving it their all, and every time one player scored, the other scored minutes later, meaning that this game was going down to the wire. Three seconds left. Can he get a shot off? Can he get a shot off? Yes, he can! But to everyone's surprise, with only 30 seconds left, Rooney would edge the win. Oh, Rooney! Rooney's in! Oh, Wayne Rooney with 26 seconds left! As Rooney cleaned up Xavi, we are now seeing a new powerhouse developing in Europe. Like, are we even surprised that England is, is doing well in imperialism? But when you're on top, there's always someone looking to dethrone you, and Luka Modric was doing just that as he challenged Rooney for his land. Oh, this land is up for contention again, man. And things are going to plan for Rooney as he took an early lead against Modric. Wait, Rooney doesn't waste any time. Okay. However, that would be the only goal that Rooney would score in this game because Luka Modric would turn it up and show the world why he's a Ballon d'Or winner. There it is. Luka Modric defeats Wayne Rooney and collects all of his line. Honestly, I wouldn't expect anything less from a player like Modric. It's the Luka Modric takeover. Modric would finally get a break as we would see Fonzie take Greenland without any contention. But that break wouldn't last long for Modric because Johan Cruyff wanted a piece of him too. Unfortunately for Cruyff, Modric wasn't about to let that happen. Luka Modric is the legend killer. This guy's taken everyone out. And just like that, he collected the Netherlands as well. But we would finally get a change of scenery as we would see Luis Suarez face off against his best friend Lionel Messi. This is going to be an exciting game. Unfortunately, it wasn't that exciting because Messi absolutely destroyed Suarez and took Uruguay. He won the game 6-4 and now Messi is one step closer from taking all of South America. Then we saw another very smart play as Lewandowski took a page out of Zlatan's book and he took a bunch of uninhabited land in Eastern Europe. And he avoids conflict, which is the most important part, right? But that wouldn't last long because Hadi would attack Lewandowski and take all of his land, essentially becoming the king of Eastern Europe. Look at all that land Haji has. But as we stayed in Europe, we would see another man who was brave enough to challenge Luka Modric for all of his land. And to no one's surprise, Luka Modric took the early lead in this game and it looked like it might be the end of the road for Pele. Luka Modric is the guy, bro. He is the guy. But then to everyone's surprise, Abedi Pele was actually able to come from behind and finally beat Luka Modric once and for all. And there we go. He's done it. Abedi Pele pulls off the underdog story and beats Luka Modric to claim most of Africa and most of Europe. It was now time for the great Jared Muller to have a go at imperialism, but I don't know what he was thinking. He went on and attacked Haji, and Haji does not take any prisoners, and he simply took Germany and expanded his land even further. Dude, how, how does Haji keep on doing this? I don't understand. After that win from Haji, we saw Samuel Eto'o very smartly take the bottom half of Africa without any competition. He's now a key player in world imperialism. And I guess Hyung Min Sun was taking notes because just like Eto, he takes the top half of Asia and becomes the person with the most land in FIFA imperialism. Son is on the takeover, man. Now, if there was one person that could beat Haji, it would be Ibrahimovic, and that's exactly what he plans on doing. I really thought that Ibra would be the one that would dethrone Haji and take all of his land, but I've been surprised once again because Haji, for some reason, is just unbeatable. He absolutely embarrassed Zlatan. How is Haji beating these legends of the game? If no one stops him, he might take over the whole world. This guy's literally insane. Thankfully, we get a break from Haji as Alexis Sanchez goes next and he faces Messi to see who is the king of South America. And Messi didn't waste any time against Alexis Sanchez and he quickly took the lead. Oh, what a 
finish from Leo Messi. He takes the lead. Come on. But to my surprise, Alexis Sanchez was keeping up with Messi and even took the lead at one point. Five seconds left in the first half. Alexis Sanchez takes the lead. And with a minute left, Alexis Sanchez would extend the lead by scoring another goal, effectively knocking Messi out of FIFA imperialism. And I'd like to introduce you to your new king of South America, Alexis Sanchez. Rest in peace to the GOAT. With Messi now out of the picture, George Best decided to take Scotland from Kenny Dalglish by absolutely destroying him, and smartly, Samuel Eto'o gains more land without any competition. You know what? Fair play to him. But that's not all because we finally get to see Hyungmin Son in action as he attacks Haji. I guess waiting for so long to play his first game made Son hungry because he showed no mercy to Haji and he became the first player in FIFA imperialism to score in double digits, absolutely destroying Haji and Romania. Holy crap, this guy's unfair. Because of that win, Sun now easily has the most land. Now that there are so little players left, things are getting very interesting. For example, Kevin De Bruyne has no land, but he faces a Betty Pele next and absolutely destroys him and instantly goes from zero to hero, getting a big chunk of Europe and Africa. Now Alexis Sanchez has already shocked the world by beating Messi, but next he's facing Ronaldo. And Ronaldo didn't waste any time in this game, quickly getting the first goal. Oh, nice turn. Okay. Alexis Sanchez was able to claw from behind and tie the game, but then something crazy happened because Cristiano Ronaldo's goalkeeper sabotaged him and he let Sanchez score three goals unanswered, making Ronaldo lose the game. Oh, that's it. That's it. That's it. With that win, Alexis Sanchez will go down in history as the man who beat Messi and Ronaldo. We're now down to the final six players and George Best has the audacity to challenge my Canadian brother Alfonso Davies. And let me just tell you, it did not end well for him as George Best lost 7-5 and Kanda makes his way into Europe. Because Samuel Atto didn't play a game yet, he was next and he traveled all the way up into Asia to fight Hyung Min Son. This is going to be a huge match, man. But it really wasn't because Son did what Son does best and he comfortably won and beat Samuel Atto to pretty much take over half of the world. Okay, Hyung Min Son is an actual madman. We are now down to the final four of FIFA imperialism and Alexis Sanchez is going to take on Hyung Min Son for basically three quarters of the world. It was looking like Son was going to win this whole thing because he quickly got himself a Two goal lead. Oh, what a rocket! I thought it was over for Alexis Sanchez, but he continued fighting, and with only eight seconds left, he scored the go ahead goal to win the game. Oh, no! Oh, my days! Alexis Sanchez with eight seconds left. Surely he's won the game. Surely! With that win and elimination of Young Min Son, there are now only three players left in FIFA imperialism. If you made it this far in the video, please make sure to subscribe. Thank you. It's time for our second last match, and Kevin De Bruyne is going to be heading up north to face Alexis Sanchez. Unfortunately for KDB, Alexis Sanchez didn't hold anything back, and he absolutely destroyed the Belgian. Alexis Sanchez knocks off Kevin De Bruyne. He's one step closer to becoming king of the world. He only has Alfonso Davies to get through now. Sanchez takes KDB's land and now we're down to our final two players of FIFA Imperialism Go Edition. I couldn't be happier the way the game started because Alfonso Davies got the early lead. Fonse, yes! There we go for Canada! Come on! However, Sanchez didn't let that lead last long because before we knew it, Fonse was trailing by two goals. Bro! Bro, how is he so- Why is he so good? Why? But by a miracle, Fonse Fonzu's able to score two more goals and tie the game at 7-7, sending this match to golden goal. Yes! 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 Let's go, Fonzi! Let's go! But unfortunately, in extra time, Fonzi would take a bad touch and Alexis Sanchez would capitalize. No! Alexis Sanchez! And there we go, Alexis Sanchez wins! If you enjoyed this video, you're gonna love this video down below as well. Make sure to check it out and subscribe. Thank you!